All right. So for a while there, it seemed like the Avalanche picked up where they left off before the holiday break. And then the third period happened and it all fell apart. New episode of Locked On Avalanche coming out. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Chris Maselli. With me as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. Begrudgingly, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but follow us on our social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter X, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram and Threads. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, locked on avalanche at gmail.com. And make sure you are following us over on our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe and get notified when a new show goes live. And subscribe to our subtext. Link to that is in the show notes below. And when you do, you will uh, chat with Kyle and I one on one, become one of our very special insiders where we get your thoughts and takes. Like we will definitely do later. They're already coming in fast and furious. Uh, about this game that the Avalanche lost to Arizona and a game that they had uh, in their hands. It, it, like I said in the opening, it was basically a carbon copy of the game right before the Christmas break against Arizona, where Arizona was giving them everything that they had. The Avs were, were standing there and dishing it right back, built up a four to nothing lead. And then in the third period, the wheels just fell off. And, and this, this season of what the heck continues for Colorado, Kyle. Like they're, they're, It's just like the wins are impressive wins. The losses are you're smacking your head losses. What is your take on this one? We're recording this minutes after the game is over, obviously, so the emotion is still there. Uh, I'm sitting there watching this, and I'm just like – I can't believe what I'm watching. Yeah. And you know, if we're going to be the lockdown avalanche podcast in true avalanche form, I think we should take the third segment off because the Colorado avalanche took the third <laughs> period off. Um, it was a, and you had all the fanfare of 19 point streak. Like this is wonderful. You get to see like, like the first and second period, they look really good. Yeah. And I was, I was sitting watching the game you know just strumming along on the guitar just saying you know this is this is about as good as i remember the avalanche being at the break this is what you want to see and then going into the third it turned into 4-1 you're like ah whatever you'll we'll be fine and then that third period was just they get a goal and then another you're like oh at 4-3 everybody kind of had the collective idea of what's going on here and when it went to when they tied it up it, it just, I don't, the fans, all the wind was taken out of the sails of the fans. You could tell it was taken out of the team. Overtime felt disjointed. Some long shifts, some weird yeah. effort, some turnovers mm -hmm. from Manson. It was just, mm -hmm. it, and then overtime, three on three, the gimmick style, you can't make those kind of mistakes or they will become the dagger. And they escaped yeah. a couple of those, but it's just just that that extra oomph was lacking for the Colorado Avalanche. They 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 couldn't stop Arizona. They couldn't stop the bleeding. They like the dam opened and they can't shut it. Whatever you know uh, way you want to like describe it, the Avalanche could not do it. They couldn't stop this thing. They couldn't stop the train. There's another like whatever you want to say. Um, and that's a problem. That is a big problem. Like, yeah, you looked great for, for 40 minutes. Um, and then, you know, even when, when Arizona get, got the one goal, okay. Like Georgiev hasn't really been getting shutouts, you know, save it for the very beginning of the season. Uh, but you, you just, the way that it's they were been playing, 84 years, it's been, <laughs> But the way that the that they were playing, you're like, all right, you can spot them one. You know, you're going into the third, you're feeling pretty good. Um, and and they just they, not only could they they not stop Arizona, they couldn't get that goal to bump them up. 
right? Yeah. When it was like four, four to three or, or or even four to two, they couldn't get that one goal ju- just to because Arizona's given it everything that they got. And and it's all and it's working for them. And the Avalanche couldn't get that goal because that goal would have been just a dagger for Arizona. It's just like, man, we're trying and trying and trying, and we we surrendered another one. It just weighs on them so much that now they have so much more work to do. And the Avalanche could never do it. And they had opportunities. Miles Wood, I think, had two. Miles Wood had a breakaway. Mm-hmm. And and you know, he's not the the you know the 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 guy that's so crafty on like a breakaway, but still he's a professional hockey player. You, you, you would think that, you know, maybe he's got an opportunity to bury this thing and it wasn't a bad attempt or anything. It was a really nice save. Um, but he, again, it's just an opportunity that went by the wayside and you had another one a few minutes after that, because when it, you were going to get them, because when Arizona's pressing as much as they are, they're going to leave stuff open on the back end because everybody's engaged. They have to put everything forward and if you can get a breakaway or an opportunity one, you're gonna get one. Mm-hmm. And they had them, and they couldn't put them home. And and it was it was it was just a, a shift from man, they're 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 just playing how you expect them to play, and a carryover from before Christmas. And then that in the blink of an eye, just seemed to go away. And like you said, in in, in overtime, overtime started like they held possession of the puck for half of the overtime and then you know you saw some guys that that were out there that typically are not out there in overtime you don't really see miles wood out there i was okay with it though because he Mm -hmm. he you know he's got the speed he's got that bull in the china shop mentality so that's okay but you also had manson who out there who he's not really out there a lot in overtime, but you you held the puck for so long. I don't know if you just if Jared Bednar felt the need that we have to get more like fresher legs out there. I don't know what the thinking was of it, but no matter you know whatever the thinking was, those were the guys that were out there. And then the goal that they got was, I mean, it was reviewed, didn't go off his glove, kind of punched it in with his with his stick. He did punch it in with his stick, which counts. Game over. And um, you know. Games like this, it's one of those that the Avalanche, for the first two periods, did everything you ask them to do. You lead Mm. the game with Amico Ranton in power play. Check. Depth scoring from Juwan and LOC. Check, check. And then you bookend it with a Nathan McKinnon power play. And if you, it's one of those games that you're up for, for nothing at that point. Nathan McKinnon gets a power play goal. You're looking at the clock and you're like, you know what? I got work in the morning. Avalanche have this in the bag. I'm going to bed. <laughs> you wake up like before social media. That's how it was like in the 90s. You wake up and you're like, yeah. how about that game? And then your coworker comes up and says, oh, the Coyotes won 5-4. <laughs> and then you're you're flabbergasted. What? <laughs> you're shook. You're shook yeah. to your core. And yeah. it's just the Avalanche did everything they were supposed to do except play the third period. And it was just the effort we talked about. You, like you mentioned it, the effort that they had in the first two periods was reminiscent to how they ended before the Christmas break. But they mm-hmm. even brought back the the lack of effort during the losing streak before the Christmas break, before that little winning streak they were putting together. That third period was extremely aggravating and everyone was at fault. It, was, it wasn't just, you can't just single out one guy. It was a collective, we have this in the bag overconfidence and just relax and that's Mm. against arizona again you see the kachina you have this mindset this is a weaker team look behind you in the standings they are not they're right they are not a weaker team they are right there and they're making noise you can't take shifts off because when you do teams like arizona will continue to build and then they will walk away with the win and two points which you desperately need you just, you just can't, it just can't happen. Yeah. You can't allow like a four to nothing lead and a four goal lead at any point in the game, no matter who the opponent is. I don't care if the opponent is the Blackhawks and I don't care if it's it, it, Vegas. Um, you, you can't do that. Like you, you have to, for, for a team like the Avalanche that has championship aspirations, right? Like that, that need, you need to be going into that third period, period, thinking like we're not done we still need another one 
and, and put put your foot on the gas, put your foot on their throat, whatever, whatever, again, whatever <laughs> phrase you want to use. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they flat out didn't. They flat out did not do that. And see, and that little comment right there that you just mentioned about <laughs> championship aspirations. Until this team can win a series, like this team can't win a playoff series. They haven't shown mm-hmm. that they could string together games in a manner where they can. Like you just gave away mm-hmm. a four nothing lead. That's to yeah. the Arizona Coyotes. The, nothing about this screams championship contender. Like it's a good team, but learn how to put games together and win those. So I'm, the the only the only rebuttal I would say to that is yeah they haven't shown that they can like string together wins, but they haven't really strung together losses either. Like they're doing this back and forth thing. So and when it's they just, lose, it's, it's bad. It's, it's the bad. bad loss. Absolutely. It's the bad Absolutely. losses. That's what stings the most. Absolutely. But when they win, they're great wins. It, it's yeah. it's an unbelievable season. Unbelievable season. So in the if if this continues, which we are going to talk about next, in the playoffs, it's just which one lucks out. D- do the wins, do you get more of those good wins or do you get more of those bad losses? And it's it, there's zero in between right now for the Avalanche. And in the playoffs, like it's it, 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 that's what's going to boil down to, is which which one of these teams shows up. But is this who the Avalanche are for this? Should should we just stop doing this? Maybe this is where they break out, or maybe this is where they write the ship. And should we just settle into this is who this season, the Colorado Avalanche? This is who they are. Let's talk about that next. All right, right now we are going to hear from Sleeper and the Sleeper app. And Kyle, have you? I know you search daily. Is, is that have you found a better app for daily fantasy sports yet? No, no. So regardless of where you are in the standings, we want to remind you that you could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. It's the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network, and Sleeper is a number one choice for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey, because. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. So for the next game, we have the Avalanche and the St. Louis Blues. Who would you be picking for that one, sir? Miko Rantanen. Why not? So all you have to do is pick whether studs like Miko Rantanen will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in a given game. So use the promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. Once again, the code is locked on NHL. So see Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. <laughs> It seems like be a, a running theme for us this year with the Avalanche, just the way that this season has been going. Like we're like we're talking about the the up and down, the good losses or the, the good wins, the bad losses. Um, and whenever there's a win, we talk about can this be the win that that they build on and just be more consistent team that that we've kind of come to know the past couple of seasons with with the Avalanche. Um, and then it's followed up by a loss and you're like, okay, like now this is another learning experience. Should we stop doing that? I mean, we're, we're almost at the new year now, right? So should we stop doing that and just accept that this is who this team is for this year? Just this constant back and forth, just this constant, you're going to have wins because they're a good team. Clearly they're a good team and they're going to have bad losses and there just seems to be no middle ground. Should we just accept that for this year? You know, I think this is exactly who the Avalanche are. I think we need to step back and <clears throat> take the Stanley Cup season away. That's like the high score. And we're going to take Bednar's first year, that terrible season, and throw that out. I think this is about where you can expect this Colorado Avalanche team to be through the rest of the year because. Just the lopsided, like we we talked at the beginning of this month, the everydayers, they remember this episode. We talked about December is a very winnable month. Well, the Avalanche have gone out and showed us how 
unwinnable, and they even purposely try to not win these games sometimes. It's 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 confusing, but we should we should stop expecting the cup run. Like that's that's behind us. We need to quit pointing back yeah. to that. Like I we're not going back there. The team looks different than that cup run. Yes, we got there. So did Washington, so did St. Louis. They haven't been back. And if Colorado mm-hmm. can't figure things out, this team is not going back. Unless they can start stringing things together and find their constant identity and who's going to be the motor, who's the, the hot hand, you got to figure these things out because if you're expecting this team to win four games out of seven, it, good luck. Well, I think for me, like we're now – Okay, like we're we're into the meat of the season now, right? So so the way that I'm kind of feeling about it is different than I how, how I felt um, in October or November. And you know, I I I I think the, the Avalanche are going to use the regular season, the entirety of it, it seems like, to figure things out. Um, and and maybe they figure it out with 20 games left in the season. Like I don't feel like the, the, they'll figure it out like going right up into the playoffs because this is a playoff team, you're right. Like they are, they are a good enough team to be a playoff team. I do not think this team is going to miss the playoffs. I think they'll have, you know, th- th- they will have win streaks. They will probably have some losing streaks. I would hope that they're not long, but I think the winning streaks will outweigh the losing streaks, and and I think they they make it into the playoffs. What number they are, what seed they are, can't can't say. But they 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 could could they go on a run? I mean, we've seen them do it before, so that that possibility of that is still there. I think like the 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 fan reaction when you have losses like this, and when you have losses like the uh, to to Chicago and and the loss like to to Nashville, <clears throat> that weighs so heavily on on the fan base and the team. But I think overall, it's still a playoff team. I still think you know th- they'll have more more good games than bad, and they'll make the playoffs. Having said that. The one, like where we are now, the one thing that I'm turning the tide on for me personally is the Gabe Landeskog factor. Mm. Because I think it was premature to to say like, oh, they they missed him like in October and November. I think that was way premature because, you know, you're, you're getting your footing for the, a long season uh, in, in those months. Now we're, we're, we're coming into a new calendar year and this is still going on. It's still the, the, this back and forth is still going on. Now I, I, I'm coming on board to the yeah. You would really need someone like Gabe Landeskog to be that voice in the locker room. They have the voices in the locker room. I, I still believe they have leaders in the locker room, but the leader, I think, for something like after a loss like this, uh, I think that that's where they miss him the most. And you know, I think it goes a little bit. <laughs> You you said this team has something to figure out. In the offseason, of mm-hmm. this team only got older, more veterans. This is not a Alex Newhook. A, a this is not a lower tier quality like a mm-hmm. Abe Kubel, like just plugging holes on the team to roster a squad. You brought in veterans that have been mm-hmm. around the block a time or two. And what are we trying to figure out here? These guys have played junior hockey, youth hockey. They played most of their life on the ice. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure the objective in every level of hockey is to win the game. What are we trying to figure out here? If you're on the Colorado Avalanche, you know how to win the game. You were brought into Colorado because of your skills to win the game. Why are Mm -hmm. they using these skills to not win the game and everybody just say you got this you got this take a step back and just wait for that guy to step up and eventually you turn around four shifts in a row everybody takes the night off and then you're completely behind again mm-hmm. the it's thing with, with, with the with point me, of figuring yeah. stuff out this team should have known well, from the hop i think i think going. we're i think we're past we're, well i don't want to say we're past it like it, it it's encouraging to see the past couple games them um kind of like take a lead and and play like the Jared Bednar style of game that took that that took some time because you had uh, kind of a pretty big turnover with your roster and that is going to take some time 
this game was not Jared Bednar, um, his, his style of, of play and, and his system of play. This was just phoning it in in the third. That's not, you know, th- that that's all this was. So it's it's constantly going back and forth. Like so, I I would hope by now we're over that part of getting comfortable in the Jared Bednar system. We're three months into the season. I I'm pretty confident that the players know like their roles and how to play them. And you 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 saw that you saw that for five of the last six periods. So now that other part needs to go away, which is like the the you know, oh we got this thing wrapped up. And when, you know, a team is, is fighting their way back into it and you, and Kale McCarr said it in, in the post game, he's like, we knew that they were going to give us everything that they had. If you knew that, where was the rebuttal? Where, where was, where was the fight back? It was, you knew that they were going to do it and you let them do that five times. Yeah. That, that can't be. And there's mistakes that happen, you know, and, 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 you know, McCarr went to go clear a puck with, with an empty net and he whiffed on it that kept the puck in the zone. Like that's not being lazy. That's just a, 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 a error. That's yeah. not being lazy. That's just it's, it's, crap. Things happen every once in a while. And then that was one of them. But for the most part, as a whole in that period, it was just, we're going to let Arizona do whatever they want to do. And it, they and, got back into the game and won it, obviously. And we're at 35 games in the season. Like we can't be mm-hmm. having 35 episodes of this is the turning point for positive or negative there has to be a a consistency somewhere it's you're just not getting it the team consistently Mm -hmm. takes shifts off i'll give them that they all decide this is good it will take half the period off and then try and struggle and then the momentum's already against them but we're 35 games in we can't keep summarizing this as like figuring it out no this is we're almost to the halfway point like yeah. this is this is getting bad. Yep. All right, let's get into um, our our last break, and then we'll we'll uh, finish this thing up with uh, some subtext comments, and of course, our sound check. So we will get to all of that coming up next. All right, right now we're going to hear from FanDuel and the Fan FanDuel Sportsbook app. And the weather is getting colder outside, but the NFL offers stay hot on. FanDuel, and right now new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And I don't think Bronco fans have much confidence that their team can win, especially with Russell Wilson no longer playing for the rest of this year. Mm. But you're looking forward to Bronco, Bronco football. Why is that, Kyle? That's right. Jared Stidham is a product of Auburn University, War Eagle. So those, those your boys. don't worry, Broncos country. You're in good hands. Okay. Uh, If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, and FanDuel is the official partner of the NFL. Um, Over on Money Puck. Well, that deserved to win o meter, which I just always get a kick out of. Av 60% deserve to win that game. Um, and expected goals 3.29 for the Avs, 2.72 for Arizona. And they got five. Not good. Um, all right. So let's get over to our subtext crew here because they, uh, they were loud tonight. So, uh, <laughs> Matt, Madam Battleax, uh, the one time I don't say overtime. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure who came out of the locker room in the third, but um, I needed the abs of the first period. Turnovers, defense, four unanswered, which turned into five is just not acceptable. Um, here we go on that roller coaster again. And the curse of the mullet strikes again. I'm telling they really you. talked about that. Like, yeah, why the abs can't win here, I, I do not know. <laughs> That's very, Just, very confusing. How close know. are they to Area 51 out there? <laughs> <laughs> um, Keegan says, I don't have anything to say about this game. It was a one time ordeal, and I expect this team to be ready to go for the blues on Friday. Um, I I agree with the second part of that, of that this team will be ready to go. 
because this is not a team that just like set, accepts a loss like that. And, you know, it's one of those games where it's like, um, you know, are, are the blues going to be the collateral damage of this, of, of this game of, of what happened in Arizona? We'll see. But the first part of it, Keegan, it's a one time ordeal. It hasn't been my man. Yeah, this look ahead. Here. That team we're playing on Friday, they already beat this Avalanche team eight to two this year. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I expect them to play well because that's just how they're built. That's just what the team's expected to do. But we'll see. Uh, Vargar, I hate when the Abs do this. They start well and are in complete control of the game, and then uh, have a let down or let off and make it close. The game went from an easy win to a nail biter and a heartbeat. And he said, just as I type, the score is tied by four and answer goals. Uh, the Yotes get another one. <laughs> so, just a total collapse. Horrible. Yeah, man. I, I, I think that's uh, felt by a lot of Avalanche fans right now, honestly. And Easton says, what an excellent way to kick off the post-Christmas break with more roller coaster shenanigans. Yep. Um, I think you just that, – that, that's going to be the, the, the graphic – um headliner for me is is roller coaster shenanigans i think i might put that up as a graphic i don't know man uh, it's, it's worth, you know we're I'm, I'm getting to the point where i could set my watch it's always going to be five pass your <laughs> oh, oh, oh don't <laughs> down i mean he it, look he gave up five goals um and and they're not all your faults some of them some of them were again, again. He had a goal that was, it, it, it was he he had a, a clear line of sight, and the shot just whizzed right by him. I don't know if that's just a goal scorer's goal, or should he have had that? Maybe a little bit of both. But the overtime goal, it I mean, it pops up in the air, lands right down, and uh, who who was it that scored the last one? I well, don't care. I don't want to give him yeah, credit. <laughs> you can, he punches you can, it in, basically. You could break down those goalie stats, even with these new next-gen tracked pucks, high-definition, mm -hmm. super 3,000 stats, and there still isn't a stat for blame. If you're sub, yeah. like, that's an 800 save percentage. That's It's not good. Not good. That's not good. Um, but when you have a, a wraparound goal where he's hugging the, the pole – and it goes opposite corner that you don't see that too much. And I am not making excuses for your gift. Um, I, I thought he looked really good for two periods. And then the entire team looked bad for a yeah. period and an over and a half of an overtime. So, uh, so it's a tough one to digest. Kyle. It really is. Yeah. It's because like, like, like Vargar said, like it was in your hands. Like it, we, we were putting the two points in the standings. We were, and and then it just fell apart. So with that, we will kind of go into our sound check for this game. And this is where Kyle and I pick one song each that goes up on a playlist over on Spotify. And you can uh, listen to this playlist and follow it. And every time we add a new song, there you go. Just open up the app, search LOA sound check. This is volume number three. So what do you got for this blown four to nothing lead? and game to Arizona. Do a little, for the YouTubers, a little ZZ Top wave, because we are doing, what's up with that? From ZZ Top. Which you know, like, we were talking before we went live, and and even you just saying it now just makes me think of... Uh, Ooh, you know, we... <laughs> that's re that really <laughs> what's should up be. With that? Yeah, that's, so... That's the great. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have an answer for it. I mean, I do have all a, a lot of answers, but it's just one of those things. You just throw your hands up in the air. I, I don't know what's up with that. This is just not a, a season that we've experienced before being, being avalanche fans, just this constant back and forth. Um, and having said all that, they're still at the top of the stand. Well, near the top of the standing. So that's, I guess that's a silver lining anyway. Um, for me, I, I got a Radiohead song off of uh what some people think is their best I, to me i think okay computer is their best album by far um and kid a is right up there mm. right behind okay computer and there's a song on kid a called uh, how to disappear completely completely what the avalanche did in your third period 
So, um, and it's a slow song. It's, it's like a, it's like a, a miserable song and, and that's what we're feeling right now. So enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy the misery. You're welcome. <laughs> enjoy the misery. Um, yeah. So, all right, that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow and I'm sure we're going to have some morning leftovers for this game that we're going to want to talk about. So, um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow to break all that down and anything else that happens in Avalanche Nation. So until then, he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I'm Chris Maselli. This is the Lockdown Avalanche Podcast. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. Get through the day. It'll be okay. <laughs>